In this video, we'll be going over a lot of the basics that you need for thermal energy. I don't mean basic as in easy, I mean basic as in base. So we're going to be using a lot of these words here. So first of all, it's important to understand what we mean by molecular theory. So that means that we can assume that gases and particles and solids and liquids are all based on molecules. So we're going to use this idea that a solid, for example, we're going to say, okay, something that's solid, it's going to have a both a fixed shape and a fixed volume. Whereas a liquid, for example, will have, okay, no fixed shape, but it will have a fixed volume. And by contrast, a gas has none of them. So nothing is fixed here. I like this in here with the cat, right? <laughs> so an important piece then is that the, the molecules, they do vibrate. Uh, so relative to each other in all cases. So I just want to show you this here with a really great set of animations called PHET. I know a lot of physics teachers like to use these, but they're really important. Also in chemistry. So if we go to PHET, we go to the states of matter one. Um, well, I can choose then. I'm looking at H2O, so I'm looking at water here. And you can see in this little box here, you can see the temperature, you can see the heat that you're doing. And these particles, you notice it's supposed to be a solid. So yes, they have a fixed shape, they have a fixed volume, but you notice they're still vibrating with respect to each other. They, there's always these little vibrations going on. Now liquid, for example, well, there we go. That's what, for example, liquid water would look like, like I have right here in my glass right here in front of me. Um, and then, of course, we also have gas. So gas would be just, they're just floating around. This would be something like, you know, steam, or yeah, it could be a lot of different ways to have water as a gas. So I think that's the key thing just to understand him is just that this stuff can be seen as molecules. Okay, so if we go on the next slide then, Kelvin or Celsius, because if we're gonna measure temperature, we have to know what scale to use. If you're an American, you're probably used to using Fahrenheit. Uh, as far as I know, I think the US is one of the only countries that uses Fahrenheit. The rest of the world uses Celsius. I think it makes way more sense. So Celsius, for example, if we look at this scale, so C right here, okay, it's all about, you know, these degrees C. Whereas by contrast, Kelvin is going to be all about just called K, K for Kelvin. So if you look at these ones right here, well, we've got it fixed. Zero degrees Celsius is the freezing point of water. That's where, you know, if you go any colder, for example, uh, then water freezes. If you go any warmer, it starts to melt. And 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of water. Isn't that easy? Now, Kelvin, however, is something different. They have the same amount that they go up by. It's just that it's got a different zero. It's got a different place. So it has this, you can't go, you can go negative Celsius for sure, but you can't go negative in Kelvin. The idea was they would set it as zero degrees Kelvin. That would be the coldest theoretical temperature you could have. It's called absolute zero for a reason. And if you want a conversion factor then, well then zero degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvin. It's actually got a decimal point there, uh, but we don't, uh, at least in the IB, we're okay with just saying 273. And good news for you, your data booklet has this. So you don't have to memorize it. The temperature in Kelvin is just equal to this. So this is something you have. And what I want to point out, though, something really important here for this pro tip. Okay, so this right here is going to be an important piece of information. You can see I'm not very good at making straight lines. There we go. So the change in temperature, we've got a delta T going on. If you're using Celsius or Kelvin, although they have a different zero point, good news, they still go up and down by the same amount. In other words, if I say, ooh, it got three degrees Kelvin hotter in this room, well, it also got three degrees Celsius hotter in this room. So it's just about which one is offset, but they actually go up and down by the same amount. This is really, really important. So that means you can be a bit lazy. If you're finding a, you're doing a calculation with a delta T, you know, with a change in temperature, then Celsius or Kelvin is fine. However, if you've got an equation that just says T in Kelvin, then you do have to have it in Kelvin. That's going to be really, really important. That's why hopefully now you understand this awesome joke. You heard about the guy who froze himself to absolute zero. He's, get it, zero degrees Kelvin now. <laughs> yes. So let's go on to define some other important definitions. First of all, density. What is density? We use this Greek symbol rho here. It looks like this right here. And it just goes like this, that it's the mass per volume. So it's m over v. This is an equation you get in your data booklet, which is good. And let's just look at these different variables here. What is density? Well, we'll figure out the units in a second here. Uh, let's do this. Mass, what's that measured in? Kilograms, hopefully you remember. And volume is in meters cubed. So because of that, then, if you look at this, what is the unit of density then? The equation tells you it's in kilograms 
per meter cubed. So I'm going to say kilogram, and remember instead of saying per meter cubed, I'm going to say meter to the minus three like this. All right, that was nice and easy. Well, how about temperature? Well, we did have definitions of you know how we actually you know put temperature in Celsius or Kelvin, the scale that we use, but we do have an equation that relates. Okay, so it's a temperature in Kelvin. This is going to be important, Kelvin, uh, and it's related to the average kinetic energy of the particles. Okay, so we're going to have an equation for this. It goes like this: that this E, that's energy, kinetic, and this here means average. Okay, so we're going to have this, and it's going to go like this: it's three halves times a constant here, it's called this, uh, the Boltzmann constant here, so the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. So it goes like this. So it's the average kinetic energy is equal to three halves times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. So let's actually go ahead and put all these in. So the average kinetic energy must be in joules. All right, well then what's the Boltzmann constant? Well, it's 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 and this is going to be in uh, joules per Kelvin. So J and then Kelvin to the minus 1 here. It's supposed to be minus 23 here. And then we've got our temperature, which is going to be measured in Kelvin. Okay, so those are how we're going to define this. And again, you don't need this in your, uh, you don't need to memorize it. It's in your formula booklet. What's really important then is just looking at this right here. If we talk about speed, this is all about, uh, actually, I'm going to add an extra pro tip here. I'm going to add this one here. I'm going to say this. Hotter. means faster particles. By contrast, slower, uh, sorry, whoops, I should say colder. I should say colder means slower, because this is very much related to you. So this one here, this is the important pro tip here we're gonna need, and let me show you what I'm gonna mean by this here. So this one here, why do I care about this? Well. When we look at temperature, you can say then, it's not exactly equal to the average kinetic energy, but it's related, isn't it? That means if the temperature is hotter, that must mean, because kinetic energy has a speed term, doesn't it? Doesn't kinetic energy have a, how's this? Remember this equation here? We have that kinetic energy, remember, is half mv squared. So there is a term there's a speed term in kinetic energy. So if this is larger, that must mean, well, assuming the mass is the same, then the velocity or the average speeds are here must be larger. So that's why, on average, then, if we look at this, hotter objects have faster particles in them, colder objects have slower particles in them. So that means, then, if I go over here back to this PHET here, let's just make it simple. We'll just make it like single atoms here going along. So a solid would look like this, a liquid would look like this, and a gas would look like this. They're just bouncing around. Notice the temperature is 56 Kelvin, for example. Now watch very carefully what happens. And if I increase the temperature right here, watch the particles carefully. Hopefully you'll start to see that the particles should start moving faster and faster and faster and faster. And by contrast, actually, if I go colder, so I'm just going to I'm going to cool this down. Notice that the temperature up here is getting lower. That's true. But also what I want you to look at is look at the speed of the particles. They should be slowing down. So then the question really might be, hey, what happens if you slow them down all the way? Well, that's when you reached absolute zero. That's why the Kelvin scale is a great one. Because what it does say is, hey, look at this. So these are here. These gas particles are here. Hey, look at this. They're all actually stopping pretty much. So that means then at zero degrees Kelvin, assuming we can get to zero, they would pretty much stop moving. That's why we call it absolute zero, because you can't go less than not moving. So that's how these are all related, right? We've got colder particles move slower, hotter particles move faster. If you want to know the exact amounts, here's the exact equation. And remember that if it stops then, so if these particles are actually stopped, that means you're at zero degrees Kelvin, right? That's the definition of absolute zero. Okay, so maybe I'll even write that down here. This is absolute zero. So this sort of encapsulates all this right here, puts it all together, which I really like. Okay, so now we've got an important definition called heat. Now this word, I know in the English language we often use the word heat for many different things. I think it's really important to understand what we're doing here. So we're going to measure, it's something called Q. It's heat, and it's a form of energy, so it's going to be measured in joules. Now what's really important about this is to understand what the definition is. Heat is just the transfer of energy 
from a system to its surroundings. Now, an important pro tip here is that heat by itself, naturally, it goes from hot to cold. It does not go from cold to hot by itself. So, I mean, you could force it to, yes, but by itself, you know, uh, this transfer of energy between a system and surroundings will go from hot to cold. This is the important part, okay? It goes from hot and always goes to cold, at least by itself, if you're gonna leave it. So there's an important definition, okay? Heat. And last but not least, we've got internal energy. We've got this right here. So this tells us something to do with the um, the forces between those molecules that were vibrating and the kinetic energy, so their speed, the random motions here. So in other words, I could state that this U, which is the letter we use for the internal energy of a system, by the way, it's measured in joules. Um, I'll put a green circle around it as well because we need to know this. And what can we say about it? Well, we could say that U is equal to then uh, the potential energy, so EP, plus the kinetic energy, EK. So if you add up the kinetic energies based on the random motion of these particles, and you added that to the intermolecular potential energies, then you get the internal energy. And one little piece to note, because uh, actually we're done, that's everything I wanted to show you, which is great. So we've seen some really important definitions, right? We've seen that, okay, we've got solids, liquid, gases, it's true. We've got uh, this scale of temperature with Celsius and Kelvin. We've got density and temperature. An important thing, though, is also that's the average kinetic energy. Why do I say that? Because some of the particles could be going slower, some could be going faster. It's not that they're all going at the exact same speed. Some go faster, some go slower. It's just that the average kinetic energy is going to be relating to the temperature through this equation right here.